all right, cell biologists, we want to be able to calculate how much fermentation is occurring in our yeast cultures um, that we time during class. Really, what I want us to be able to do is to create a beautiful graph that has time on the x-axis and weight lost on the y-axis. So remember that what we're measuring is the weight of the beaker uh, over time. And we should be seeing uh, weight lost. Um, and that's because CO2 is leaving. So an example graph might look like this, where we see where we see time on the x-axis. You can see here I'm putting in 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45, an hour. Um, and up at one hour, let's estimate that we have about two grams of weight that have been lost from this beaker. One gram, zero, here's half a gram. One and a half grams of weight that have been lost from this beaker. One and a half grams looks like right about 30 minutes. So let's talk about what's actually happening when that weight is lost from your beaker. Recall, first of all, that we're feeding our yeast sugar. Yeast plus sugar. They're going to undergo fermentation. They're going to release CO2 and also produce some ethanol which I'm going to abbreviate ETOH. Now, if we think about what the process of fermentation actually involves, uh, we really start with a six carbon sugar, like glucose, so it has six carbons. And through the process of glycolysis, we turn that glucose into two three carbon molecules of pyruvate. Now, in our cells, most of the time, pyruvate goes on to the citric acid cycle, and that can also happen in yeast, but in yeast, it's more common that this pyruvate would undergo a two-step process to produce, ultimately, one molecule of CO2 and one molecule of ethanol. And, of course, ethanol has two carbons in it. CO2 just has one carbon in it. So our three carbons from pyruvate are present here uh, in the outputs of fermentation. As we're seeing weight being lost from our beaker of cells, that's representing this CO2, which is a gas that will leave the liquid mixture of yeast, sugar, and water and uh, travel away. The ethanol, any remaining yeast, and any remaining sugar, and the water, will still be in the beaker. So this, so the lost weight up here is going to be that CO2, which is lost from the reaction. Now, in order to figure out how much CO2 is being made through fermentation, and the same question, how much CO2 is being lost as a gas, we need to think about a couple things. Um, First, let's consider that the formula weight of CO2 is 44 grams per mole. We can also note that the formula weight of ethanol is 46 grams per mole. Last thing I want to remind you about is Avogadro's number. Um, that is the number of mo molecules per mole. And we're going to use that as a constant here. So let's start uh, thinking about an example where in 30 minutes time in the lab, we measure 1.5 grams of weight lost from our fermentation beaker. All right, I just said we need 1.5 grams lost over 30 minutes, okay? So in order to figure out um, how many moles of CO2 this is, we can just convert 1.5 grams 
and we'll use the formula weight of CO2, that is 44 grams per mole. If you multiply that across, we get 0 0.034 moles of CO2 lost in those 30 minutes. And what's the easiest thing to do next? Let's do it per 30 minutes. So let's divide the whole thing by 30 to figure out CO2 per minute. If we multiply or divide that across, we'll calculate that 0 0.0011 moles of CO2 were lost per minute. Well, 0 0.0011 moles doesn't seem like very much. Let's think about that from a different perspective. I want to multiply this by Avogadro's number. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole. Okay, and if we uh, calculate that, what do we get? It's 6.84 times 10 to the 20th molecules of CO2 per minute. 6 times 10 to the 20th molecules. Okay, that's kind of a hard number to think about. It might be easier if we could figure out how many CO2 molecules each yeast was producing per minute. But in order to do that, we need to know how many yeast are there. That's something we know how to do. We've been calculating, uh, you've been measuring or counting the number of yeast on your hemocytometers. So let's think about our hemocytometer data. Um, in our small squares in the middle here, I'm not drawing enough, um, there are 100 squares in the middle of our hemocytometer. And those squares have uh, a size of 0 0.1 millimeters wide, 0 0.1 millimeters high, and if we were measuring uh, the distance uh, in 3D, so that is the distance up to the cover slip, and I'll draw it to the side here, that's also 0 0.1 millimeters. So as an area, each square contains 0 0.1 times 0 0.1, times 0 0.1, which is the same as 0 0.001 millimeters cubed. That's the area of liquid in each of these small squares. We don't often use the prefix centa when we're thinking about biological uh, measurements, but in this case, we do want to convert millimeters into centimeters, and we can do that by just shifting the decimal point one place, so one or 0 0.0001 centimeters cubed. And what's fun about centimeters cubed is that when we're talking about something in water, it's the same as milliliters. Another way we could write this is 10 to the minus fourth centimeters cubed equals 10 to the minus fourth milliliters. So those calculations are the same no matter how many cells you have counted in your hemocytometer. Let's do an example calculation. I counted an average of 18 cells per square. That will be my example. I have 18 cells per square on average. Of course, probably I counted four to six uh, squares in order to get that value. So let's take 18 cells per square, and I want to figure out how many cells I have per mil. So in a square, I have 10 to the minus fourth mils. So let's multiply this by 10 to the fourth and figure out how many would be in one mil. That's about 180,000 cells per mil. Well, how many mils are in your beaker full of yeast, sugar, and water? That could vary from group to group, but let's estimate that we have 70 mils of yeast, sugar, and water. If I multiply 180,000 cells per mil times 70 mils, that means in my beaker, I have an estimate 
of twelve point six million cells just in this 70 mils. Now look at the great things we've calculated here. We've calculated how many molecules of CO2 are being produced per minute. We've calculated how many yeast cells are in our yeast culture. And by putting those two together, we can figure out how much CO2 per yeast is being produced in our fermentation beaker. To do this calculation, we'll simply divide through. So we know we have 6.84 times 10 to the 20th molecules of CO2 per minute being produced by our uh, fermentation bucket. So we've got CO2 leaving. And we've got 12.6 million yeast cells doing that fermentation. That works out to be 5.43 times 10 to the 13th molecules of CO2 per minute per cell. That's amazing. That's more than 1 trillion CO2 molecules per minute per cell. Unbelievable. Now, you don't need to do this calculation for every single uh, time measurement or weight measurement that you took of your yeast cells because uh, we calculated this to be per minute. So you can do this um, just with your final value and figure out how much activity, how much fermentation was happening with the uh, sugars you used. Last but not least, I'd like to remind you that we want to be able to build a graph over time with weight lost. So although you'll only do the calculations once, um, you do have zero time, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes approximately of fermentation happening. As you plot your data, You'll be able to build a line of how much activity, how much fermentation is occurring in your beaker. And we may not get to the leveled off plateau because of the short amount of time we were able to measure. Uh, but do know that if we were to measure out here at two hours or three hours, we probably would start to see the rate of fermentation slowing down because all of the sugars have been converted into CO2 and ethanol. So by the time this line flattens out, it's because we've lost all of the CO2. In the time we're measuring in the lab, we still are increasing our amount of fermentation because there's still more sugars to be fermented. So please do go ahead and make a graph like this of your data. And I hope these example calculations also helped you to think about how much CO2, how much fermentation is taking place in each of these yeast cells.